The law of God is really quite simple and many really overcomplicated. God's law is simply the revealed will of God. The clear definition of his perfect righteousness. That's basically what it is. It's pretty simple. What a gift we have been given to know with certainty exactly what it is he wills for us. This has been the most profound question ever asked. People have been wanting to know this their whole lives, you know. If I could only know what the will of God is for me, then I would just do it. Well, we can know exactly what he wills for us if we simply read it. And it's not even that hard. The Father has made his instructions very, very easy for us to understand. Like we pointed out how uh, Messiah said before, unless we become like little children, we will in no wise inherit the kingdom of heaven. The law is not too hard for us to comprehend. It's not above our heads. You don't have to be smart at all. You certainly don't need a theological degree to get this. God structured this in a way so that even when the most ignorant farmers come every seven years to hear the instructions read aloud, that they would understand it. If you have been confused before, that's because someone has confused you, not because it's above your head. It's not above your head at all. Now, the adversary, whose middle name is confusion, has hijacked many of the positions of authority in the Christian world and has made it his point to convince you that the will of God is way too hard for you to understand so that you need to run to the local we, uh, wolf in sheep's clothing so that he can explain it to you. Now, please don't fall for that one anymore. God's will is perfectly clear, and a first grader has a better chance of comprehending it when he reads it than to someone who just graduated from a completely confused seminary. If you really desire to know the will of God, this will make sense to you in just a minute. But first, you need to pause this video, turn off the TV in the background, and pray. Before we seek truth, we need to ask that God removes any bias we may have in our hearts or for any concept that we may hold already. We're not seeking to confirm our bias, but the, the real truth. We, we need to ask him to cure us of our pride for whatever it is we think we already have figured out and ask him to open our hearts to be open to his will, which he has written for us. If you really, truly seek righteousness, his word is where it lies. We don't want to invest our lives in the word of pastors or theologians who can make mistakes. We want the pure word as our guide to keep us straight. Now, we're about to read God's written will, so we need to be open to it. Go ahead and pause here, take, take your time, and ask him to reveal the truth. Okay. As we uh, go through this, I pray that the Father will open our hearts to what he is communicating here, and that anything that may not be of him will be erased from our minds forever. We just want the truth. All right. We need to remember, as we go through this, that these instructions of righteousness are a gift of true love. The study of God's law is my favorite study, as it is the very definition of love. In my opinion, after all my little studies and all my great revelations, only one thing has always felt right to me all the time, and that's love. Love is the one thing we can all agree is worth getting to know better. True love. Not the love we have for lollipops and Corvettes and all that junk, but true love. Love is patience. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Some folks see only prophecies. That's all they want to get to know. But prophecies will all come to an end. Some church people focus on just speaking in tongues. 
but that'll cease. I waste a lot of time thinking and pursuing great knowledge, you know, green, being the great Bible expert guy. But that's not where the life really is. But faith, hope, and love, they abide. And the greatest of these is love. So as we go through and read these things, know that love is the fulfillment of the law. Okay, the word. For the full, complete, detailed set of instructions, we have been given the law in a set of five books. These five books give the complete context and background of who God is, what he has done for us, and exactly what he requires of us if we are to walk in righteousness. Now, if we read these requirements, we'll quickly find out that we don't really match up. But as we'll see a little later, within these same instructions is the solution to this problem. Now, these five books are the first five books of the Bible called the Torah, or the instructions, literally. You'll see how the later books of the prophets are built upon these first instructions and also prophesied how one day the requirements given in these instructions would be fulfilled in a coming Messiah. Now later, in what is called the New Testament, we're given an example of how to live and carry out these instructions as shown by the walking word of God, the Messiah himself. We also see how we fulfilled the requirements needed to pay our debts for the many shortcomings that we have in not living up to the law as we should. The last book of the Bible shows how all the rest of the law will be fulfilled at the end when Messiah sits everything straight and creates a perfect new heavens and new earth, better than Eden, for all those who will choose to respond to his love and follow him to the end. That's a lot of reading, I, I know, but thankfully God has made the path easy for us to start on. Messiah sums it up the best. What is the heart of the law? Hear, O Israel, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. This is the greatest commandment. You said well. You're not far from the kingdom of God, Joseph of Arimathea. But there is another commandment, no less great. You must love your neighbor as yourself. But who is my neighbor? Yep, that's the heart of the whole book. That's the foundation of what God wills for us. All the rest of the commandments, examples, and statutes are detailing what these two great commandments entail. These two things should make up the core of our very being. For if we follow all the instructions in the whole scripture, we take the entire Torah to heart, all the 613 mitzvot, and, of course, the Big Ten Commandments, we will truly love God with all our heart, soul, and strength. And we will truly love our brothers as we love ourselves. Now, we with our twisted little imaginations can attempt to fill in all these little blanks ourselves, and we can make up our own nice little theologies that serve our filthy, lustful desires that will lead us to misery in the end. You see, our Father, being the creator of the universe and of us, knows exactly how we really tick. Ever since we chose to wreck our perfect world, by rebelling against him back in the day, we need to have all the details of what constitutes righteousness given to us so we can live the full, love-filled, purposeful lives that we are created for. The, the more we have chosen to live without these instructions, the more we have made the world a nasty place. If we would all choose to follow the details of how to live these two great commandments... You wouldn't need locks on your doors, teen crisis centers, strategic air commands, huge police departments, or Saga 12 assault shotguns. Now, unfortunately, most of us have chosen to live outside these loving instructions 
and we do need our Saga 12 assault shotguns. I mean, the world is a nasty place out there. So to clarify exactly what he meant by these two great commandments, he gave us more detail in what we know as the Ten Commandments. The, the first four of the Ten Commandments tell us what it means to love God with all your heart, mind, and strength. And the last six of the fir first Ten Commandments tell us what it really means to love our brother as we love ourselves. Now, if we want even more detail, we're not satisfied with one of those, we still want to get more detail, we have the 613 mitzvot, which really fill in the blanks for us. Want to know more about the love and brotherhood section than what's in the Big Ten? Well, then we can read God's will in even greater detail, like uh, not to stand by idly when human life is in danger, or uh, not to bear a grudge, not to leave a beast that has fallen down beneath its burden unaided. The Ten Commandments are just the beginning. There is actually 613 commandments detailing God's loving will in matters of righteousness, including categories like uh, marriage and divorce and family, what not to make love with, what foods are safe for you to eat, and what will make you sick, how to properly throw a party and celebrate the accomplishments of the Lord, uh, property rights, criminal laws, righteous punishment and restitution, how to take care of critters in a loving way, and all manner of things we would do well to know. Now, if we still have a hard time understanding any of these 613, we have the full context in the rest of the scriptures, detailing the full ramifications of these instructions. Any question we could possibly have dealing with what would God have us do is answered in his word. So, let's go through the foundational Ten Commandments and get just a small taste of the loving character of our Father in Heaven. Now, you may think you have heard them already, but I bet most of you have never heard the actual Ten Commandments. Most of our churches have erased over half of what was actually commanded so that they could continue in their spiritual adultery without being challenged. Some have removed entire commandments, like the Second Commandment, and then shuffle the numbers around and split some commandments up so that they can still add up to the number 10? Let's read the actual Ten Commandments straight from the original source so that no one can pull the wool over our eyes. 